Thank you very much, uh, Gerlach. Uh, so it's indeed also a very big pleasure for me uh, being here. And um, I hope you will find this uh, interesting. I, I know that some people are interested in the audience. And actually some uh, um, people, uh, um, but this work couldn't have been done without the collaboration of uh, many, many people over the, the years, um, including this Vika is mentioned here, and uh, Pedro for example, is mentioned uh, here. So, um, well, <clears throat> It is very well known that uh, electronic and optical properties of material depend on the temperature. And in what, what aspect do they depend? If we take um, as a function of the frequency here for germanium, the evolution of the imaginary part of the dielectric function related to the reflectivity, uh, etc., we see that going from 100 Kelvin this curve here to 825 kelvin this curve here there is a shift in energy of the peaks and also a broadening with increasing temperature which is usually associated with a decreased electron uh, light time but even at zero kelvin the vibrational effects can be important because of the zero point motion and as an example here as a function of the temperature, one has experimental points here for the uh, band gap of diamond. And actually, without any vibrational contribution, keeping the atom position frozen, the band gap would be here. And this is about 0 0.4 uh, electron volt. And um, so usually these zero point motion effects are not included in first principle calculations. And moreover, they are linked to polaron physics. And this was an introduction to what I will present today, uh, the overview. So effect of vibrations on the electronic structure. We, we have seen that they are indeed, but I will ask whether it can, they can be obtained correctly within the adiabatic approximation, born of the main word, or one needs to go beyond. I will show that zero-point normalization improved the brand gap from first principle, they have been computed. And I will discuss the physics of zero-point normalization in infrared active materials. And I will connect with the very well-known in the Polaron world, Polish model. Then I will show an eye throughput analysis of Frölich type Polaron models, and then I have a small part, well, you will see whether it is small or not, contribution to total energy of this electron phonon uh, interaction. And you have uh, here several papers if you are interested. So, what do I mean by adiabatic or not? When we have the Born of an approximation, it is very easy to compute in whatever electronic um, approach. Uh, the um, Eigen energies. And for example, for H2 molecule or the CO molecule, as a function of the bond length variation, here is the highest occupied molecular orbital energy. The Eigen energy for the CO is here represented as a function so of the bond length, or for H2, it is here represented. And we see that taking the equilibrium distance here, changing the length will indeed change the Eigen energy uh, values. Roughly, <clears throat> it is linear, but not quite. You see, there is a small bending here. So with temperature, vibration, we can understand intuitively sorry, how the broadening will happen. Indeed, we will center a set of values for this homo. And also the shift, the shift will actually come at the next order, the curvature. Indeed, if there is a curvature and you simply uh, vary the bond length nearly symmetrically because of the curvature, you will get a very small, in this case, shift of the uh, Eigen uh, energy. And this brings actually a first possibility to compute Eigen energy uh, values, average, as a function of temperature. 
if one take this formula as a function of the bond length according to the time with molecular dynamics trajectories looking at the eigen energy we make here an average over a long period of time of this quantity and get roughly speaking the eigen energy as a function of the temperature so you can imagine how to do this for more elaborate molecules it is a well-defined procedure molecular dynamics trajectories it is compatible with current implementations and computing capabilities one can use either dft with its well-known problems or gw which is much better um, predictor for the eigen energies and harmonicities might be included there are nevertheless two problems if we use classical dynamics there is no zero point motion at zero temperature no movement and also it is adiabatic in the sense that we freeze the atomic position and get the eigen energies at that time at that configuration instantaneously the eigen energy is that one so there are vibrations but no exchange of energy between the electronic system and the phonon uh, system let's do a bit better if we now consider the thermal average with quantum vibrational state with this a bit more complicated formula this being the um, um, wave functions for the nuclei uh, describing the probability to find the system with state described by delta r you see we integrate over all possible um, configurations and then in order to get this at some temperature we take into account the partition function etc and then because we know uh, that there is a zero point motion a spread of the uh, eigen in a eigen value uh, as a function of displacement we will get the zero point motion included still we retain the good capability the good features but we keep the adiabatic approximation in this uh, formula now when we want to do better it is possible to use many body perturbation uh, theory beyond adiabatic approaches this has a long history i will simply retain the current uh, acronym for this approach which is due to this seminal paper by alan heine and, and helen and cardona with the acronym ahc in this case at the lowest order of perturbation theory we have two contributions a d by waller diagram and a fan diagram here a second order electron phonon vertex is present and here two first order electron phonon vertices are present and the two here and the two here are related actually to the curvature that i mentioned it's a second order derivative respect to atomic uh, position in some uh, way this being said so one can indeed associate a diagram to a mathematical expression and for this diagram we obtain the so-called fan self energy with two electron phonon first order uh, vertex vertices and the additional factor is represented here where we find that the phonon frequency is to be addition, uh, well, added or subtracted from something that includes electronic uh, energy here and there so there is a transfer of energy between the phonon and electron uh, systems now such different uh, approaches have been implemented and as concerned the AHC approach the diagrammatic approach I'm using uh, Abinit here and uh, I will pass the technical details one has also to take into account the zero point lattice expansion in order to to compute zero point renormalization uh, the, the lattice constant will be changed already by 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 phonon um even at zero temperature um i also do not describe in detail what is really done uh, from the 
self and self energy. We are using the on the mass shell uh, approximation that has been to shown uh, to be better than solving the Dyson equation uh, when compared to diagrammatic Monte Carlo. And I switch immediately to the result in which I will obtain the, the important uh, conclusion that indeed with AHC, it is possible to get a decent agreement with experimental data for the video point homogenization. Let's compare indeed experimental zero point normalization with first principle zero point normalization with this non adiabatic Allen, Heine, and Cardona. It's logarithmic scale 12.5 to 800 MeV. Same thing here. The line here is the perfect agreement. The dashed lines are 25% disagreement. And we see that for a whole bunch of materials, the agreement is within 25%, uh, which is actually considered quite decent, as we will see. This is not completely true for the 18 materials. There is gallium phosphide here and cadmium telluride here. When we first published the result, it was in 2020, uh, we hypothesized that for this material, spin orbit coupling might be important, and it was not yet included, and in a later publication, we indeed obtain uh, a much better agreement, cadmium telluride going uh, here. So far, so good. Now, what do we obtain if one does the adiabatic supercell uh, calculation? These are the green, uh, sorry, red triangles, and you see that we go out of this range for about half of these materials. Moreover, for the materials that have light elements and um, large ion city, that is infrared uh, activity. So this change here for zinc oxide, because it is low rhythmic, it's actually a factor of three error, going from nearly 200 MeV to slightly above 50 uh, MeV. Why is it so? Um, well, it comes back to the basics of the electron and phonon uh, physics. Usually, electrons are uh, are uh, imagined to be fast, this is the adiabatic approximation, compared to the phonons. Let's have a look at what is happening for long wave LO, longitudinal optic uh, phonon. So we have here a periodic atom chain that will be compressed and uh, expanded uh, on a quite long range with respect to the interatomic distance. This phonon create a potential that is felt by the electrons that might be low or high, low or high, low or high, etc. The lowest energy, Aiken energy uh, wave function will be uh, a function of this type. We have uh, quick oscillations that are at the level of the atomic um, distance, and then an envelope that indeed should show a node where the phonon potential is quite high and a bellow uh, here. And then um, in order to obtain such an envelope, what should we do? We should combine an electronic state with the initial wave uh, vector giving the fast oscillation, also with an electronic wave function with k plus q, q being the wave vector of this long wavelength uh, uh, vector. So um, now remember, we have electrons with this parabolic dispersion, and we have an, a, a phonon with quite flat longitudinal optic phonon uh, uh, branch. What is actually happening if we include the time the dynamics is that this potential is oscillating with the frequency of the LO phonon. 
So the characteristic time is the inverse of the LO phonon uh, frequency. Then what should happen to the wave functions? Instead of having a node here, after a half period of the phonon, it should have a node here and there. Okay. But in order to change this um, inter interference between K and K plus Q, one has to change the phase between these two things. How much time will it need to do this if we are at the bottom of this parabolic beha um, behavior? Here we can examine by perturbation theory, and then we, when we come combine electronic state K and K plus Q, this difference here will be actually very, very small, much smaller than the omega LO that appears here plus or minus. This means that doing the difference here, we have something that behaves like Q squared divided by two M star. A small energy difference means a very long time. And in this case, actually, electrons are slow to rearrange with respect to the, to the phonon. And that's exactly what we see in the comparison between the adiabatic case and the non-adiabatic case, and what we will actually explore a bit more thanks to the Frölich model. Um, but before going to the Frölich model, I will show that indeed zero point normalization improves the, the band gap. Um, and here I refer to a 2007 paper by somebody in the audience here, where this is a very, very nice calculation of electronic structure band gap for a whole set of material using the so called cell phone system GW with screening that includes electron and hole um, interaction. Compared with experiment, the agreement is quite good, actually the best that uh, has been achieved uh, to my knowledge, but still the difference is on the order of 0 0.1 EV um, up to, um, sorry, yes, this one is up to 1.4, going from this column to that column, one can go down to 0 0.4 EV, and the biggest discrepancies are obtained here for carbon, boron nitride, magnesium oxide, lithium fluoride, materials that have a light element that is present. And the claim is that uh, this discrepancy is due to phonons, at least partly, due to the zero point renormalization, indeed. So what we did is to take this very nice set of data and to then compute, you see here the set of materials, first principal gap divided by the experimental gap, the data from this uh, paper is mentioned here, and we see, so the perfect agreement would be this line. And we see that there seems a, a slight, to be a slight overestimation. The material, that's not true, but uh, if we take into account the zero point normalization, for many materials, we fall inside this plus four, minus four percent uh, limit. Still, there are some black sheep here. And we remark that cadmium selenide, zinc oxide, zinc sulfide are actually materials that have 3D elements inside. And our hypothesis is that the error does not come from the zero point normalization because we also know that it is in good agreement with experimental data, but likely it is due to a GW electron hole uh, error for materials with the orbital. So there is still some room for improvement uh, beyond uh, GW electron hole um, um, approach. There is another remark about this result. I have also represented on this figure 
the values for the gap obtained from a non-self-consistent so-called G0, W0 calculation. That is probably 50 times, 100 times, 20 times, I'm not sure, uh, more uh, faster than such GW electron hole uh, calculation. And you see one is going from this to this and then zero point realization, et cetera. And for some materials, we see that actually this correction, the zero point normalization, is as large as the difference between G0, W0, and GW electron hole. You see here, here, and in these three cases. This means that before doing a big calculation on top of G0, W0, one should think about the zero point normalization. In such case, uh, it would not have. Uh, it would have been much better uh, to do the both together, uh, of course. Let's now go to the um, physics of the zero point normalization in infrared active materials, thanks to the Frelich model and the links with polar bonds. So this Frelich model, perhaps many of you already know it, would be good. Huh? Um, it's already a more than 60 year old model to describe large polarons. What are large polarons? Simply a composite object, one electron dressed with phonons. Called polarons because indeed the electron will polarize the system. And if the system is indeed infrared active, ionic, uh, uh, naturally, the positive charge will be attracted, the negative charge will be repelled, and globally, we will have indeed the formation of uh, such a composite uh, particle. Whether it is a dynamical polarization or a more self-trapping type of static uh, polaron that is created, we will discuss this afterwards. Large polarons are usually um, to be uh, of, um, contrast it with small polaron, and usually for small polarons, one uh, has uh, indeed a frozen deformation around the frozen at uh, electronic uh, position. Okay, so the Frolish Hamiltonian consists in taking one conduction or valence electronic band, I will take conduction band, so you see here which means that we only care about intraband electronic uh, contribution in this Frelich model with an interaction with only one LO phonon branch that I re represented again in the long wave approximation as a flat uh, value. So the electronic dispersion is parabolic, the phonon energy is constant, and the interaction will be the macroscopically screen and actually, these three hypotheses are valid if we restrict ourselves to the Q equals zero part of the Brillouin zone. The limit would indeed be uh, correct. But in the Frelich model, it is extended to the full Brillouin zone and beyond. Now, what is a bit surprising with this model is that we have no Debye no transverse optic, no acoustic branches included. But actually, it turns out that it contains a dominating physics for infrared, infrared active material, um, usually. And moreover, we also know that the description is good for large polarons. The atomistic details are completely washed out. Indeed, it corresponds to a Q equal to zero uh, description. So, mathematics. The Frelich Hamiltonian is represented here with the electronic part, the phonon part, and then the electron phonon interaction with a coupling constant that will depend on Q, the momentum transfer, uh, that is a Coulomb type momentum transfer, so one over Q. And then we have a set of macroscopic constant uh, only. So it can be computed very easily or taken from experiment. And that's what Frelich was doing uh, at that time. Now, this Frelich Hamiltonian 
might seem very simple, it's actually very difficult to solve, uh, no analytical uh, solution. Um, we will see later diagrammatic Monte Carlo result, but the lowest order perturbation theory result is very simple. We get that the formation energy of the polar round, or in the other language, the zero point normalization from Kurdish is simply minus alpha, I will describe it here, times omega LO, the omega LO that is present from so the single relevant parameter is alpha, where we find the macroscopic dielectric constant uh, high frequency, same thing low frequency, omega LO, and the effective mass square root. Only one parameter, that's nice. Indeed, <clears throat> if we compare perturbation theory versus exact result, we can represent as a function of this complete coupling constant, the result of the Polish model. We have noticed here that it must be linear in lowest order perturbation theory. And indeed the formation energy or zero point normalization is represented in perturbation theory by this line. Diagrammatic Monte Carlo data are presented here. There is a difference for high value of alpha, for high coupling uh, strength. But perturbation theory is doing better than a solution of the dyson migdal equation. I will not make too much comment about uh, this. So we see that up to alpha equal to six, um, perturbation theory is working. And this is indeed confirmed by the computation of the polaron effective mass. Again, it's a function of alpha. Low rate of the effective mass is here. So this is one bare electronic mass here. The one here indicate 10. The two here indicate 100 effective mass. And the perturbation theory result for the effective mass is given by this dashed line. Actually, we will see the, the result in the next slide. One minus alpha divided by six at first order um, inverse. This means that the effective mass diverges actually at this value of alpha. So keep in mind, alpha is equal to six is the limit at which perturbation theory is working. Beyond this, we have actually a regime that is dominating, dominated by self-trapping of the electron and phonon. <clears throat> and indeed, so higher order perturbation theory with, gives rather small correction for energy, even beyond alpha equal to 10, but there is a problem, the effective mass break down, and uh, that is not corrected by uh, additional um, uh, terms. On the contrary, when we work in the strong coupling limit, the electronic wave function will be frozen with finite extent and will simultaneously induce a frozen deformation of the lattice with finite extent. And these are self-consistently um, building um, together. The quantum fluctuations are ignored and indeed we have a self-consistent solution. So here we see up here the small coupling limit and the strong coupling limit with self-trapping in the second case. I'm not even speaking about interatomic distances here. Uh, still in the Frölich model, we can have two, um, two um, regimes. Then uh, we know that the Frölich model is not valid if the localization length becomes comparable to interatomic distance, in which case the atomic details matter for both electrons and phonons. And there have been over the years many calculations of small phonons using first principle calculation in the supercell, and indeed some of the people in the audience have made a lot of these uh, calculations. Okay. And um, what we have done is first to generalize the Frölich Hamiltonian to be applicable 
to uh, uh, more realistic materials. What does it mean? Well, in realistic material, the bent edges usually will be degenerate, degenerate possibly anisotropic. There might be multiple phonon branches still with the same macroscopic hypothesis. So the whole theory was developed in order to be able to treat the Frelich, well, in the Frelich way, realistic uh, materials. And the lowest order perturbation theoric value for the zero polarization, the polaron formation energy, was also uh, given. Is this predictive? Well, there are sufficiently ionic materials for which indeed such a theory is uh, predictive. If we make the comparison between first principle band gap zero point polarization and the Frelich model band gap zero point polarization for a set of materials that include oxide, calcogenite, uh, nitrogen based or nictite or silicon carbide, the perfect agreement would be here. And we see that for the oxide and calcogenite, we get usually um, something like 75% or more of the zero point normalization by this Frelich model. But then the situation degrades a bit, and especially for these materials that are not, well, not very many, uh, uh, the ionicity is not very large, then it can hardly be uh, predictive. And using this model, and also the understanding that we have, small, uh, well, weak coupling, strong coupling, but also large polaron or small polaron related to interatomic distance, we have started a high throughput analysis of these Frelich type polaron models. High throughput, we based our um, calculation on already existing phonon band structure. There is a database in materials project of more than 1,500 phonon band structure uh, that are relatively uh, accurate. Um, here is a sample uh, for 53 materials. The frequency here of the, at, at gamma, so the, the transverse optic or longitudinal optic uh, data, um, the error made with respect to experimental data is represented here. And we have an histogram that has a peak at about 3%, so 3% deviation with respect to experimental data for the frequencies at uh, gamma. And for a large fraction of these material, it was possible to extract the parameters of the Frelich model for, from first principle uh, materials project database, calculate the effective mass and obtain an effective alpha, I say effective because we went from the generalized to um, the normal standard uh, Frelich um, uh, parameter by some uh, manipulation, uh, some mathematical treatment. And so here's the formula for the alpha. Here is the formula for the zero point renormalization. And you have here a glimpse on uh, the points that are obtained for uh, column 15, 16, and 17 of the periodic table with the associated color, blue, orange, and green. The vast majority of the materials have alpha below six, so justifying a small coupling, a weak coupling uh, of Frelich corresponding to weak coupling polish, but there is a sizable number of points also beyond alpha equal to six. And then we have also here a measure, um, oh, I forgot to mention, the positive values are for whole polarons, the gap is uh, decreased, and the negative uh, values are for the electron polarons, also the gap is uh, uh, decreased. For most material, the zero point normalization is smaller than 0.3 EV, but there are materials in which it is bigger than uh, this. And we can go in a more detailed um, analysis. So it's a busy uh, figure. Huh? 
statistics for 1260 materials what is plotted we we, we spend we will spend two or three minutes uh, in on this graph in a logarithmic scale we have the alpha value here and there for the electron polaron and the whole polaron so electron polaron whole polaron the alpha limiting alpha is six as i just mentioned and it's indeed drawn here. on the other hand vertically we have a measure of the extent of the polaron if treated in the strong coupling treatment and in order to have a comparison with the interatomic distance we have drawn here the radius 10 ball it's a bit arbitrary but clearly above this we are in the um, large polaron uh, limit no macro no importance of the atomistic uh, this detail and below this we might start to feel the presence of the different uh, atoms then what we see is obviously for electron polaron the vast majority uh, of the data are in this quadrant so we have large polaron uh, in the weak coupling region where the foolish hamiltonian can work if uh, the uh, the physics is dominated by the foolish uh, hamiltonian and for the electron polaron outsiders are only very few this day for the whole polarons the situation is slightly different you see that there is globally an evolution towards the lower right hand of the square and there are many more uh, cases that should be described as uh, small polarons with a strong coupling uh, value of uh, alpha also noticeable is that there is a clear grouping here and there although the dispersion is uh, present then what we have also analyzed is here the histogram of the projection on the uh, um, length axis or the uh, strength axis here and here and there and we can here have um, yes an idea that actually um, the number of small polygons is perhaps one third of the total uh, amount of uh, material for the whole polarons, but much, much less for the electron uh, polaron. Is it um, predictive? Well, what we did uh, is to check uh, our Furlish model with respect to first principle AHC data in the case of um, noticeable materials that we had uh, detected. You, you have here uh, selected um, uh, values the zero point normalization from the diagrammatic approach first principle is compared to very heavy is uh, compared with the zero point normalization from Frölich and you see that globally the Frölich um, model is quite uh, predictive of the zero point normalization and the final word about this um, uh, study is to explain the difference between electron and holes it comes mostly from the effective mass of the um, inside the Frölich model and the fact that there are many more um, material with high effective mass when we have valence uh, so valence bands then for electron is actually well established um, um, you have here this histogram of effective masses uh, from a high throughput study of 3000 uh, oxide number of compounds is here you see electrons the effective masses are usually much lower than one while for the holes effective masses are usually much bigger than uh, one so this translates immediately to this positioning of the set of points electron versus the holes okay now i will switch to the last part of my 
presentation, electrons for non contribution to the total uh, energy. Um, actually, I don't know, perhaps you have noticed or not this uh, paper 2023. Electron from an interaction contribution to the total energy of group four semiconductor polymorphs evaluation and implications. In this publication, the abstract is here. We propose and compute a new correction term to the total energy due to the electron phonon interaction. We rely on Allen's general formalism, which goes beyond the quasi harmonic approximation to include the free energy contribution due to quasi-particle interaction. We show that for semiconductors and insulators, the EPI, electron phonon interaction contributions, are the corresponding zero-point energy contribution. And then they also point in SIC polytypes, the electron phonon interaction correction term is more sensitive to crystal structures than the van der Waals and the zero-point energy term and is thus essential in determining the energy differences. It clearly establishes that the cubic silicon carbide 3C is metastable and hexagonal uh, 4H is the stable polytype which is in agreement with uh, experiment. Somebody alerted me about this uh, paper um, that I found at first to be quite uh, indeed uh, interesting. Um, well, I have here tables with their uh, data, and, and indeed, at the end, they obtain the correct ordering, unlike with just plain DFT, uh, of this uh, polytype, and they claim having the EPI energy gives a large difference between uh, polytypes. But um, they rely on Alan's recent work. And this is taken straight from Phil Allen work. Actually, it's an eratum to his uh, another paper, 2020, so it's an eratum 2022. And the total energy uh, correction is computed with a structure that is the bywaller plus fan and some modification of uh, this um, expression that for several bond bands yields a very appealing expression that the total energy from electron phonon interaction is simply the change in zero point, the, the zero point generalization for state N and K summed over all occupied states. And that's it. Which, so you can imagine we know that every eigen energy will be modified by electron phonon interaction, and we simply sum the modification uh, due to this uh, zero point realization. But actually, Alan did not derive this expression from first principle. Actually, a true first principle approach is starting from born Oppenheimer approximation. That is the basis for phonon. Then we have to take into account the correct spin appearing in addition to electronic energy, DFT, and phononic energy, DFPT. And actually, in 54 already, Born and Wang had proposed an expansion to be taken as the basis for such an approach. Instead, Allen started from this effective Hamiltonian, yeah, where there is the electronic contribution, then the phononic contribution, mm -hmm. sorry, try to find my own. And then it adds, uh, sorry, Alan has this electron phonon interaction and compute the modification of the ground state. But there is a scaling problem. The phonon frequencies, you might know, if you rescale the mass of all the nuclei, is behaving like n minus one half. So there's a square root of the mass of the nucleus. 
So the total zero point energy, so the phononic energy is indeed scaling like this in the adiabatic uh, approximation. But the zero point renormalization of each eigen energy is also with this scaling. And this is well known. Um, the fit with such uh, an expression was done, for example, by Cardona and Tewald. So if we consider this very simple expression, the total energy changed by electron phonon has the same scaling than the phonon energy, which is already a bit suspicious. Actually, from Born and Wang extension, the electron phonon contribution is the inverse of the mass instead. And then actually, I will show that Allen's expression is simply part of the phonon uh, energy. It's two pages of equation, but I hope that you will follow and it's not very uh, difficult. So in DFT, the born oppenheimer energy can be written in this way. The sum over Eigen energies that we have to correct for the R3 and exchange correlation energy, and we have to subtract this thing, and then we have the nucleus nucleus interaction. So we split this bond of an amber into the Eigen energy part plus everything else that is here. We have here the expressions for this splitting. The vibrational contribution to the total free energy is, you know, the zero point motion, omega divided by two, and we sum over all modes. Now, this expression, EVIP, that I have written here also, can be obtained from this curvature of the born oppenheimer energy with respect to atomic displacement, Eigen vectors. Eigen displacement, collective Eigen displacement, and we have to divide by two omega sigma. Actually, from this uh, formula, we go to interatomic force constant. This we plug in the dynamical matrix equation to obtain this value. And then finally, we have the normalization of Eigen displacement to get this quantity. So I take now this expression and will show that. We have, it contains the Allen expression. So this is the expression for vibrations. And I split this expression like done for the born oppenheimer energy. So EBO is the Eigen value part plus everything else. And I go from here to the sum of these two. This one being the Eigen value contribution to vibrational energy or the other part contribution to the vibration energy. Then we use the Eigen energy definition, the sum over Eigen values. And we note that actually there is a force expression in which now here we have the Eigen energy appearing that gives the delta ZPR for that specific Eigen energy. And finally, we have that this part of the vibrational energy is the sum of the ZPR. It's Allen's expression. So not an electron phonon contribution to total energy, but a contribution already taken into account in the phonon zero point contribution to total energy. So this was appealing, but actually completely wrong. So back to the Varma paper, the SIC polytype energy ordering is not explained. And this might be perhaps examined by RPA or then adding, uh, well, you know, this is still a puzzle in the, in the literature. Why do we have this ordering of the SIC polytypes? Mm -hmm. So to summarize, uh, I have shown you that one is able nowadays to do accurate calculation of the zero point normalization. Well, 25%, whether it is accurate or not, you will judge but the point is that experimental data might be might differ by about 25 person uh, depending on the, the there are two ways to uh, experimentally obtain such a, a value and they can be agreed at that level 
The ZPR effect can be as large as the difference between the simple GW non cell phone system approach and a very sophisticated cell phone system GW plus electron hole dielectric screening. The adiabatic approximation breaks down for infrared active solid, but Scully Hamiltonian is able to capture the main feature for first principle result for infrared active materials. Actually, tolerance might be thought as being slow electrons plus fast phonons. And nevertheless, um, the Frelich model has its own limitation, and we have um, examined the statistics of the formulation of small tolerance and inadequacy of perturbation theory. And finally, electron phonon contribution to total energy is not the sum of ZPR from the occupied state. Thank you very much for your attention.